My name's Asha Fenn, and uh, every night I do a meditation. It's often uh, what is a haibun, which is, you know, basically essay and poetry fused. Uh, tonight's is more uh, true essay, but I uh, wanted to read it and edit it as I go through. Uh, you'll see me probably reaching up to mark things. Uh, I always write in cursive first if I can. I love um, just the, the way the, the cursive flows on the page, but also I adore um, the process of going through reading it and then typing it and then reading it and then typing it. I'm very uh, external processor. I have dyslexia, so I like to hear things. And that's enough of an intro. It took hours to work through the exhausted pain, enough to stand and move to the couch. So far, I have let go of any ambitions to eat or shower because I am too far gone to be able to finish cooking or washing before I would start crying. As well as I do with solitude and Given the creative flow has been my sanctum sanctorum for decades, since I could hold crayons in my stubby little fingers, I am able to have relatively few moments when I am utterly without distraction. But days like these, the past few weeks, take a massive toll on my mental health. In bed, too uncoordinated to write, my eyes too bad to read, I remembered what it feels like to swim in a summer warm lake, how the water caresses my body, holding me up so I can see the clouds floating across the sky. Muscles now too crowded with tumors recalled in their cells how graceful they could be without gravity. Joints remember the freedom to hyperextend. Water has always been kind to me, even though the ocean has spanked me with its cold. That the river is across the street from this old moldy home was quite the delight. And since I moved here, when I was still suicidal, the bridge always felt like a potential blessing. But now I have pain, exhaustion, and the echo of despair wandering through my awareness, competing with the sun-soaked water of my favorite pond. I need to chase more joy. The cursive helps. This writing has always filled me with awe that this undulating fractured line of ink can be understood by people far from me in space and time. We have learned over the millennia how to preserve our longing into art and word. When I feel defeated by my isolation, I realize I am driven by the same impulse as the cave painter, reaching out from my view of eternity, from my love for life and living, to share my world with you. Hungry, and fairly fragrant from fever and sweat. I am delight regardless. I am remembering this small fox that runs from my yard when I pull back into the driveway. I am not alone here. The cat has returned to place himself right beside my writing arm. For the sublime joy of this solitary communion is contagious until I cough my way <laughs> into brief unconsciousness. But when I picked up my pen again, I immediately became fascinated by how convinced my senses are that the world is what loses all grip on geometry and physics rather than me. Denial to the end, how desperate we are to believe that what we hear, see, feel, and think is reliable, complete, 
and correct when our wonderful bodies cannot fully process anything. When my breath comes hard like this, I snap back to stillness and slowness, for I have learned panic does not help process oxygen. It took years of training my breath, but once I could spend time here, slow and in flow, the disparity between what is actually inside a heartbeat and my normal ability to process it proved to be more vast than I could have ever guessed. Many tears have been shed over what loveliness I failed to notice. Not regret, for I'm too happy in my loving, for as I write, but true grief over the limitations of my mortality. We humans have been so short-sighted, and none more than those who look like me. Over the course of three generations, the horrifying and crippling effects of abuse, racism, and sexism moved from ubiquitous to glaring, to transgressions, to incomprehensibility. For the next generations, may they be able to throw off the shackles of myopic selfishness and create a better world. All I can do from here, stuck on the couch, too dizzy to lift my head, is fall in love with each breath and feel the grief. And if I push it away because I do not want the discomfort, I will impede my own healing. To admit the loss and transgression is a prerequisite for forgiving self and others. Forgiveness translated to loving the process of living right now so much that nothing could make me surrender this bliss. If I would not sacrifice this breath's communion as I scribble out my longing, as I share my world as best I can from this isolated safety, then everything that comes before settles into peace. At this point, I have been cave painting for so long that there is balance between suffering and bliss. As aware as I am of how hopelessly out of step I am with fads and philosophies that saturate my society, I delight in myself. Unable to stand in this exact moment, I remain rooted inside my passion. While I would twirl like a Sufi or float like a saint, I am fully content to stop and listen to the cat purr and the stylus smack the scream and revel in the love that pours out of me. And it is in my nature to want to share. No one benefits from hoarding blessings when they can benefit without harming anyone else. At least that is what I tell myself. As I know full well, I have no idea how to share this. But all things in time. I owe myself forgiveness and kindness too.